it's Carla at Bound to Be Vintage, and I'm so glad you stopped by today. Today I wanted to share my latest journal. It's a flip-flop journal. If you're not familiar with those, they're kind of an accordion shape, and the base structure are those long um, business envelopes. Um, if you're interested in making one, I would recommend the channel Best Journal Boutique. She does a lot of them and has some good tutorials on them, and they are a lot of fun. So let me take you inside and show you what I've done. On the front, we have the first flip, and I've decorated that with some stickers and a little piece of hardware that I thought looked kind of like a door knocker. And it opens up. And I had a piece of lace that just fit perfectly. I didn't have to trim it. And I made a pocket. And this was cut from a postcard. Reproduction perfume ads. And it's just a little journaling spot. This was the paper that inspired this project. Regency fashion, kind of into the Edwardian and Victorian period as well. Uh, I left this page blank because I just wanted to see that paper. I really like it. You can see the envelope structure here. And that makes a pocket. And I have a journaling card. This features the ballet since the cover featured the opera. And then you open it up to the first signature. And I've got a top tuck made from some embroidery paper with ribbon and a pearl button and lace trim. And I've tucked a piece of reproduction Victorian scrap. Little pocket here. And this is some Tim Holtz ephemera that I've turned into a journaling card. Here I've got a little hidden away journaling spot that opens up. This was a page from a furniture book and it had um, images of that time period. So I've done kind of a collage on it with some vintage wallpaper and some pattern paper scraps. Got a little tassel on there. Sorry silk ruffle. Another little journaling card. This one is a graphics fairy image. I've added some stickers and some ribbon. There's some blue parchment paper on the back for journaling. Here I've made a tuck out of a hanky and this page is from China Painting and I uh, have a whole stack of those I got at a retirement home thrift center one time. Another graphics fairy tag, done a little stamping, and added a little design on the back. Here I've done a pocket from um, a lettering book and embellished it with some lace and a button. And then I've created this journaling card with some more stickers. These are Kathy Holden, I believe some stamping, fussy cut image, some lace. This one's just plain on the back. From embroidery transfer paper, I made a flip, so there's some semi-hidden journaling space there. Here we have a pocket with a journaling card that's just made from embossed paper. And some stamping on the back. This also is a flip, and there's a little journaling card in there, another graphics fairy image. I've printed it on pink paper. There are lots of ledger style pages in here. I've stamped numbers at the top of them. Some of them are blank for journaling and others have been decorated. Here's a spread with those papers. This is the other side of the envelope that made that flip. Just decorated it with some lace trim, 
mother of pearl button and a little fussy cut woman from the graphics fairy. Here I've done some uh, stenciling with texture paste and added some pretty shell buttons. Both of these pages have lots of journaling space, some pink lace trim, and a little collage up there with a mother of pearl button. Here's the back side of the china painting pattern. I thought this little scrap looked like it went really well with it. And I've done a little decorating at the top with a crochet flower, a mother of pearl button, and a little padded blue flower. Here we just have some cloth tape to embellish the side. I've got a little tuck here. And then this is another page from that furniture book. And I took some scraps of blue paper and used various Anna Griffin embossing dies on them and added a little piece of ribbon I got at an antique shop just to give that page some interest and I stamped numbers. Made a pocket here embellished with ribbon, lace, and some little beads. And I have a piece of authentic vintage ephemera in there for a ball. Then a little bit of ribbon trim on a print that's a map of Paris. And here for this pocket that ends the first signature, I've made a little scrappy notebook, some vintage moire ribbon with this little tag attached. I've attached it with a brad so it can be taken apart and the paper can be replaced. And I just have a couple kinds of parchment paper in here. For the second signature, this I also glued it so it can be used as a tuck if wanted. Another page from that furniture book, Sorry Silk Ruffle. Here I've made a little pocket with some collaged items. And for the inside, I took a menu and just printed it on pink paper. This is another graphics fairy image, the menu. And I've done some gold spatters on there. I have a stamp that does spattering. Just to give it a little more interest. And I outlined it in gold with a pen. And I've done that gold outlining on several pieces of ephemera. I think it gives them a nice look. This is an actual plate from the China painting set that I cut out and glued it down the middle so I'd have two tucks for these little journaling cards. And again, these are Graphics Fairy images. I should mention I do have a premium membership to the Graphics Fairy. They have a site with free images and then their premium membership. I did some stencil paste. A little bit of pink trim and I stamped on that label. A little bit of trim. Here I took a placemat doily. I've added this little tag from the Graphics Fairy with a mother pearl button and some embroidery floss. This opens up and then it can be opened. I had this page from a book called The Girl of the Period. It was an essay that a student wrote and this is a reproduction of it. And I fussy cut two women. And this can be hidden journaling on either side. Another ledger page. I've embellished this with some paper doily and china painting. Got a belly band here embellished with lace and another one of those perfume cards that I've cut out of a postcard. I've lined it with gold, and we've got some crinkled seam binding. Here we've got a top tuck with a little swan image to match the image on the furniture. And this is authentic ephemera with some French soap. I thought the blue went well with this page.
another page from the furniture book that I've embellished with lace and one of the Avant Marche cards. I believe this is Sam Pool. And I have added some lace, some vintage wallpaper, some pattern paper that's been, um, the edge has been cut decoratively. And there's hidden journaling there. And we have just a little tab on that page. And this is a, a lace applique belly band. And I've got a fan in here that I embellished, oops, need to go that way, that I embellished with some fuzzy purple trim. And this was a graphics fairy image, or images, I should say, of fan blades. So I'll just fold out like that. And here, I did a hanger image to try to match the hangers in the print here. And this is just like a vellum. And I've hand stitched it and added some lace and a crochet flower. And then we've got two women in the fashion of the period. Done some stamping on there. And this is printed on old vintage onion skin paper. Has that nice crinkly sound. So now this is the other side of the journal, the, the flop to the flip, I guess you would say. And again, it's that paper that inspired me. You open the next signature, and I just have some stationary paper tucked in here for plenty of journaling. This lace became a bottom tuck. And I have a little tag here that I've just embellished with um, an eyelet there and the label. A couple kinds of seam binding ribbon. On this page, I made a little envelope and the label keeps it closed. And then here's a little journaling card. And this is uh, coffee dyeing that I did with plastic lace to get that design on the paper. I've got a belly band here that I've stamped. I've added some metallic trim and a little wax seal that I've added gold to the edge and another piece of stationery. This one is kind of a tone on tone tall print. And it just gives a lot more writing room. One of those ledger pages, I've got some trim here and a little tag of a woman with a telescope and a very small little pearl dangle like I have on the front cover as well. Here I've used a die cut as a belly band and this is a copy of an authentic French page I have that's a calendar. It came out of some sort of um, event booklet and I've just printed it on some parchment style paper for journaling. I fussy cut this woman and added this little tag which was thrifted and put some trim on it just to decorate the page. Here I have another piece of old ephemera that I've added the trim button and more trim to and I put a floral on the back. This is so old that it had kind of cracked, so I used the trim to help heal up the crack and also the decorative paper on the back. In here, I've just added a seal just to jazz up that corner. It's a vintage embossing seal that I have, and it's actually for the Orphan's Court in Pennsylvania, but you really can't read all of it. It just kind of adds a nice touch have another journaling card that I've made with trim and buttons, stamping, a little bit of embellishment on the back. For this page with the sari silk trim, I've done an over the page tuck. So 
it gives you a lot of journaling room. And it just goes over the page. So it's decorative on both sides. On this side, I have another one of those little tags that were graphic fairy images with another little tassel. Here I've used a blue medallion and a mother of pearl button to make a tuck. And this was a little freebie I got somewhere of a ticket. But I like the image of the girl reading. Here I've got a lace flip and journal underneath and a label and more uh, texture paste stenciling, but I added different colors of paint to the paste to make it sort of a metallic blue. There's a little bit of shine. I made a belly band here with some authentic vintage French stamps. This was another page from the furniture book. I've added a label, I've stamped. And then this letter is printed on some old onion skin paper and this is an actual letter that I own that is absolutely falling apart but it's from 1823 and it's from New York and it's about a young woman who has moved to the city and is getting situated and I just love this I wish I could get it to reproduce a little better but no matter what I do in Photoshop it just looks grungier than grungy But that's okay. 1823 was a long time ago. On this page, I've got a top tuck. And I've made this tag from a bookmark. A little stamping and a little trim. And then the final signature. This is another piece of authentic ephemera that I found when I was traveling in Pennsylvania. Actually, my son found it for me and asked if I'd like it. And of course I did. Here I've got an envelope with some trim. It forms a flip. And then I have that same image on a journaling card. A couple kinds of trim and a stamped label. Here I have some embroidered fabric and some trim and another Aubin Marche tag. Just to make a little flip, it hides the word flowers. Oh, and I did put some little um, gemstones there in the corners, just to bring a little more color to it. I've always loved this page. It's a graphics fairy image, and it's like a ledger page about making curtains and the costs and all the materials that are needed. So I've done that and created a flip with a little bit of stamping for some writing room. I've added a label to it. And then I thought this trim across the top went really well with it. And I've got an old button on there. Here's just some washi tape. And then this also can be used as a tuck. And I just did a collage here. I love this Jane Austen stamp. I got four different One's from an Instagram seller, and I was hoarding them for this journal. And then this is called a book dart. It saves your page in a book, and it looks a lot like a pen nib, an old writing pen. Um, so I've used that since this says stationary, and just tucked a little lace underneath it. Here I found these little note cards, and I've just got kind of a double flip here, some Eden, Edith Holden page, and you have all this journaling space that's all hidden away. More sorry stickers. I used the frame in here, it's a little bulky, but it becomes a journaling card when you pull this out. It's a piece of an old map and an authentic old French stamp with journaling space on the back. Lots of places to journal in this. Here I made a pocket that looks like a tag. It's got the little greyhound on there. I really wanted to use him. Doubled up a couple different trims here. And then there's another bookmark tag in here of the ladies in the hats. 
Again, I've added some trim and stamping. I did some woven ribbon on the side of this page just to add some interest. And I've got a mother of pearl button at the bottom just to make sure that it's secured. And then on the other side, I did the button at the top. Put a little collage together with a couple of different elements. A little bit of decoration with a ribbon and button. I have a long deep pocket. And in that, I have another sample card. Again, I believe this is sand pool. And I've just got a little piece of lace glued on there. And this can be used for journaling. The back side of the envelope flip with a little bit of lace and another one of those Jane Austen stamps. And again, I have the green gems up in the corner. And in the last pocket, I have another piece of China painting instructions. This one was for a teacup and a plate. And I avocado dyed that to give it a little bit of a pink color. And we have the lace corner tuck up here. And then you're back to the beginning of the journal. I hope you've enjoyed this flip through of my flip flop journal. Um, if you would subscribe, I would love to have you as one of my viewers on a regular basis. If you keep coming back, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you could give this uh, video a like, a thumbs up, it would really help me to grow this little channel. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you soon.